Welcome to Variable Ports. This is lesson seven in the designer. Now we're going to talk about using variables in the designer and the impact that they have. So let's take a look at what they're defined as. So variables uh, come in several formats in Informatica. And, uh, there are variable ports, which are in the expressions, included in the expression editor, uh, in the aggregator, in the lookup, in several different places you can use variable ports. These are variable fields, if you will. And they reside or keep their value constant time over time. They are row-level variables. And they're only alive inside of the single uh, transformation where you define them. So in this case, they're localized. So I'm looking at edit transformation. I have an input field. I have an output field. Uh, no variable ports. But this in the expression editor, we would uh, invoke the expression editor to set up a variable port. And as we demonstrated in the last lesson, we have to click the V column in order to get the variable port going. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So the first thing that, that we want to note is you want to assign all of the variables in order. So actually, you know what? Let's take a look at the, the, the execution order of this in a few minutes. So we're going to assign all the inputs in visual order, and then we're going to assign all the variables in visual order, and then we're going to assign all the outputs in visual order. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Let's actually go to the board on this and, and see how that works. In an expression editor, we have the input, the output, and the variable. So the I's the O's, and the V's, right? So these are the checkboxes that we have in the columns and um, for each of the fields. Now, the way Informatica actually executes a row of data is you've got a data row sitting in memory, so in RAM. You have a block of rows, so this is your block of rows. And this is one row. It will take each of the fields out of, one, out of this row and it will go into the expression editor and it will flip this up and it will first it will go through all of the fields in visual order. So visual order is what you see is what you get. That's WYSIWYG design. So field three, field ten. If this one if field one is marked as input, it will assign this field a value first. If field three is marked as input, it will assign this value uh, second. Uh, so then it, it follows on down. And then if field 10 is marked as input, it then assigns a value to field 10. Then it goes back to the top of the transformation, back up to the top. And then if field 2 is marked as output, it assigns a value to field 2. If field uh, 4 is assigned uh, an output, it then assigns an output uh, value to field 4. So this is the nature of execution inside of Informatica's expression transformation. This is not in any manual anywhere, so you might want to write this diagram down. From there, it goes back to the top again, and then it finally executes, oh, I got this order wrong. You know what? It actually executes the variables before it executes the outputs. I apologize for that one, folks. So it goes through the variable calculations next. So field two is a variable, field four is a variable. It goes back to the top, and finally at the end of this, it assigns field five, six, seven, uh, 11, so on as output variables in the order in which it is received. At that point, it has built a, an output block of rows and it has gone through and then it has assigned variables and results to the output from those rows. So this is the nature of execution. So the execution is all inputs first, go back to the top, all variables next, go back to the top, all outputs next. So the order of the variable fields, the visual order in the expression editor is what counts. And so this is what we see here. So uh, V row count starts at zero. We're going to show you how to build a sequence generated row count in another lesson. And this is what we're talking about. But V row count is initialized to zero upon uh, startup of the map. Um, and then, of course, what you see here is we've got V old name uh, before holds the value of the previous row. Now, what that means is the first row comes in and assigns a variable V old 
old value. And this is empty. And what it does is it says, go get me the variable value. Let me clean this diagram up just a little bit so we can use it, make sense of it, and tie it to the slide that you're looking at here. Um, so we've got uh, V old name before. So V old name before. And it gets assigned a value called V old name after. V old name I'm going to abbreviate. So the first row in, and the old name after, actually appears in visual order as field three. The first row to come into this expression, both of these are blank. This one says, go get me the value from here. This one is blank, so it assigns a blank to this. And then it says, well, V old name after, give me the value of brand name. Or give me the value of the field that we're requesting. In this case, uh, V old name after is, is after I name. So let's just write that down there, I underscore name. So I underscore name has Brad in it. So when the first row comes in, Brad gets assigned to V old name after. Um, the second name, the second row that comes in, the name is Sam. So here we go. We execute this one. The old name after is Brad. It's the previous row's name. So Brad gets assigned here. And then Sam is coming in. So Sam gets carried into this variable. These variables hold their value for row after row, which allows us to do some uh, row over row calculations, which are kind of cool. So as you can see here, this is the row set. We've got Jones in the first row. And V old name is null or empty. V old name gets assigned to after. Jimmy gets assigned as the second row. Jones gets before. So this value carries down here, and Jimmy gets assigned. And then Jack comes in the third row. Jimmy carries down to before, and Jack is the current. So this is the nature. Now, if I switch these variables in visual order, then the values will switch as well. So this is important to remember. So let's take a look at the variable ports. Here's an example of a variable port in, in uh, an aggregator where we're taking the zip code start and we're saying count the zip codes that begin with the number nine. I know that's pretty hard to see. So some of the things we can do in the aggregator variables or in any variable is simplify complex expressions. We can build multiple variables and use them one after the other. So we can use the previously assigned variable in the next variable definition. And so this is pretty nice for breaking up code. We don't always want to do that. We're not looking to break code down into the individual modular level, but we want to keep it as compact as possible, yet still maintainable. So maintainability is a big issue. So use, use in another variable port um, it is local to the transformation in which that variable port exists. If you want to pass this variable down stream to the next transformation, you can do that by putting in an output port and marking it O and then assigning it V old name uh, after. And then when Informatica gets to assigning the output ports, it will take the value out of this field, which occurred uh, assigned previously, and it will insert it to the output port and pass it downstream. So that's the only way you can expose those variable content to the next transformation downstream. So as you can see at the bottom of this slide, these variable ports are available in the expression, the aggregator, and the rank transformations. So let's take a look uh, a little bit closer here. In this particular case, we are counting uh, the group so the state counter, if the previous state is equal to the current state, and we see a previous value, right, these are both variable ports, then increase the state counter, otherwise reset it to one. So this tells us every time the new state changes, this assumes, if you're going to run this kind of calculation, it automatically assumes that your data is sorted by state. If your data is not sorted by state, this calculation will fail. So you can use it for temporary storage, you can use it to remember values across rows. Um, and just don't forget that numerics are initialized to zero. Strings are empty when the mapping logics are processed. Uh, one more piece of advice that the variable ports that are computed are held within the transformation are not visible in the normal view and not visible in the iconic view.